if you look at all of 2012, the whole year, um, it's Icosa Dodeca. So you're looking at Icosa being the sacred waters, which is the 20, and the 12 is the Dodeca, which is the eternal ether. So it's once again accessing our eternal ether via the sacred waters or accessing the sacred waters through our eternal ether. It depends which way you want to look at it. And um, But it definitely gives us a most wonderful opportunity of um, reconnecting with our greater essence of self. So it is a very, very important year. I mean, if you look at the amount of change that has occurred in these last two years, yeah. three years, four years, um, if you look at the global agenda that is hell-bent on totally controlling the human awareness, our human psyche... The whole play, the whole plan just reveals itself if you could just look at it from the bigger picture. Mm. And and I was talking about reconnecting with a higher aspect of yourself and that's what it's really all about. It's about, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to pull out a quote which is so simple but so powerful which sums everything up. To be or not to be. Well, it is nobler to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. I mean, it's really that simple, to be or not to be. I mean, are you going to be authentic? Are you going to be truly you? Because yeah. that's all you need to do to reconnect with your greater essence is you need to be you more than ever. Be more of you. Be more of you today than you were yesterday. Yes. And tomorrow be more of you than you are today. And the more you do that, the veil between your lower ego and your higher self thins and thins and thins and thins. And it's getting going to get to the point where the two will the, the it will just rip open, and because it'll get so thin, and a really powerful connection will take place. So, yeah. I I you know you're going to be yourself, or you're going to live a lie. Yeah, you're or are you going to wait lie? for a certain date, or everyone else to wake up before you do, or are you mm-hmm. going to naturally just go with the flow in in the process? Yeah, so you do, the question to ask yourself, are you done living a lie? Mm. Are you done feeding other people? Are you done living to other people's expectations? When are you going to start honouring yourself? When are you going to start being authentic and being the real you? And and a lot of people can't be their genuine selves because it just rocks the boat in their lives too much. It disturbs, you know, they they've trained everyone else around them to feed off them. And when you do stop that, when you change and you start being authentic and you stop feeding those other people around you, everyone around you gets the shits with you. They don't, pardon my expression, I mean, that's, sorry, that was a bit of a, you know, <laughs> got out. Um, but they get really upset because you're no longer feeding them energetically. You you are yes. being authentically you and you're no longer living to their expectations. So the more you do that, the more you're your authentic self. And wherever that takes you, if you've got to move out, if you've got to leave your job, if you've got to change the way you do something or start a course, whatever, wherever that takes you, that's the set of energetic patterns you need for your life's journey to complete and recreate balance. So what's good for me is not necessarily good for you. Mm. So people need to follow their intuitive heart and wherever that guides and that's what they're meant to be doing. Mm. And um, and if anybody gets involved in a course, like whether it's Reiki or it's uh, kinesiology or it's whatever, whatever you choose to get involved in, um, if you make that your everything, then you've created a religion. Yes. So that's, an, you know, these are all stepping stones. And uh, if you think the rainbow body is it, then you've put a limited... Um, you put yes. limits on your existence and you've created a religion. Um, you've got to get to your eternal and infinite self, and that is in your heart, and that is the only, only way. How can we get closer to to these, you know, experiencing what you're speaking of? I mean, what can we be doing to connect closer to the source? The most simplistic way I can explain it, as I did yesterday, is to continue to be your authentic self. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, this and start just, using our heart more, and instead of overruling it with our mind and our ego and and societal pressures, standards, etc. Uh, I would say yes to all of that. Um, I'm going to put in a simplistic way first, and that is to just be. It's about as easy as it gets. As about as simple as it gets. Just be. 
um, to be or not to be, like I said yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, the other the other way to look at it is the ego must be embraced, not denied. The e- mm-hmm. ego must mm-hmm. not be attacked as though it is something evil, as though it is something bad. Yeah. Um, you cannot exist in this reality without one. So when someone says to you, I have no ego, that's ego. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We've, we've, all got, we've all got ego and you mm-hmm. can't, in, it's the interface for this reality. If you don't have an ego, you cannot communicate with anyone or anything on this level of reality. So the trick is, not the, yeah, the trick or the, um, the golden key is to embrace your ego and instead of your ego functioning from the mind and being influenced by the mind and therefore external energies, your ego, by embracing it and loving your egoic aspect of self, because it's a part of you, um, the other the other version, you know, oh, I've got to get rid of the ego, I've got to dissolve it, got you know, all that attitude that those other spiritual concepts, which are not really spiritual, they are a very clever program. They create more division within yourself, and they yes. create judgment, they create self righteousness. Mm-hmm. So, the the golden key is to embrace your ego, to love who and what you are, everything you've done and been, have no regrets, just learn from your experiences. And so now you realign by embracing your ego, you realign that aspect of you with your heart. So your ego and, and your greater essence. So now you're back in synchronicity with your ego. And this flow just emanates. It, it's like a fountain of energy and consciousness and beingness that starts flowing from much greater aspects of yourself down through the levels, through from your heart into your ego and your ego is realigned with you and creation. And it is no longer functioning from the um, external influences of the matrix of those people around you, um, from mental constructs to do with religion, belief systems, and you go back into synchronicity. Okay, uh, here's another one. Um, It reads, Yesterday George said that we shouldn't let people feed off our energy and to be ourselves. But I'm very much myself, and in my work, people feed off me all the time. Are there exceptions where it's appropriate, though tiring? Um, Well, I think it's an individual case-by-case situation. If that person feels that they want to continue to allow people to feed off them, that's up to them. But I don't want people to feed off me anymore, and I make a conscious effort that when people are talking to me and they're just throwing shit at me, um, pardon my expression, I use that word again, crap at me, <laughs> um, um, it, it really just, I say within myself, I'm no longer going to feed you, you have no right. And uh, you can look at that person and for me, I can actually more often than not feel what's plugged into them. Like um, I had um, someone close to me and they were really talking to me in a crazy sort of way and giving me a hard time about something. So I just totally tuned out of that and tuned into them, um, not the conversation, but tuned into them. And then I saw this big green reptilian standing behind them. And so this person that was close to me was giving me a really hard time, and the reptilian was realised that I was seeing him, and it was a male uh, coming through a female, and uh, and he was just laughing at me because mm-hmm. he knew there was... You know, you can't you can't tell the person what you see and what's happening. Yeah. So I, I, I just said to him, thank you for your service, but all your efforts are just water off a duck's back, and then he got really angry mm. um, because he realised what he was doing had absolutely no effect on me. Mm. Um, it was really quite an exchange. So you can, you can function on these multi-dimensional levels in an instantaneous moment. You can have a conversation with somebody, expand your awareness from that just the realm of that conversation, realise what is happening, the dynamics of what is taking place, and you can speak to the higher person and say, look, you know, I love you anyway and I appreciate what you're saying and, you know, the lessons, because the person that's speaking to you in that way is also 
role playing for you because you've got something to learn from that. That's why you've attracted into your life. So it's always important to ask, okay, what do I have to learn from this? And mm-hmm. I just feel the person that's asking this question has still got, you know, um, is caught with guilt between a life of servitude and their interpretation and understanding of what a life of servitude to others is all about, a life of service, and actually reclaiming one's sovereignty. Um, Because a lot of the higher spiritual concepts, um, what we deem higher spiritual concepts, to me are really 4D cosmic mind concepts. Uh, Mm. They're very sophisticated and they promote lack, scarcity, uh, subservience, and all of that is glorified into humility and a life of service. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be careful the way these things are packaged um, because, you know, Christy, you and I are living a life of service. We're doing what we can to serve our human family, and yes. many people are. Even if you're just a cleaner in a, in a yes. school or a hospital, you still, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so there's notions of what a life of service is all about and the reality, the greater reality of what a life of service is all about. So I would say try not to get caught up too much in these mind-bending philosophical expressions of what a life of servitude is all about and know that you have every right to defend your sovereignty and we're right at the point now in the journey of humanity and this planet that we have every right now to no longer allow these entities to feed off us one way or another. Mm, absolutely. Um, and, and they did uh, add another comment here in the chat. They wanted to clarify. Um, he or she says, they don't throw crap at me. They just take my energy. And it looked before like they were in some type of health care. Um, but wouldn't you think, uh, George, that perhaps all relationships contain a, a little bit of give and take? And, you know, there's always energy exchange going on. Um, and it's not always negative right i mean just like oh, absolutely you're uh, helping me pack while i'm doing the show with you and you know it's it's just a, a beautiful experience and you know there's no usury or or you know anything like that but there's certainly a, an energy exchange oh absolutely there always is but what i'm talking about is energetic exchanges that are out of balance mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, i'm talking so- about i'm talking about being someone um, that other people want you to be and not allowed to be yourself. And I'm going through the process with certain relationships I have in my life that I'm being me. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the way these people are reacting because if I was to continue to be the way I used to be with them, then those people are happy. But now that I'm not, I'm not no longer being that other person, which is a false me, which is a fake me, yeah. which is a me that was constructed just to please the other person, Yes. then that is all good and dandy for them, but in the long run is detrimental to me because I'm living a lie. Mm-hmm. So what I'm choosing to do now is to be me, and I'm doing it diplomatically and gently around people, mm-hmm. but it's really interesting to see the way people react and behave it around is. you now. It really, the dynamics of that, has really changed, and I really see it. It's very, very obvious what's going on. 